Praise the Lord. He was a captain in the army. He, he, he led a lot of men. He's been to Iraq, Korea, and I mean, he is a marvelous man. He wrote several books called Faith in the Fog of War, Volume 1, Volume 2. Give a good round of applause to Brother Christopher. How you doing, sir? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you, man. What a blessing of the Lord. You know, I, I just got to meet you in the green room just a, what, about an hour ago. Yeah. And already I can sense the presence of the Lord in your life. But what I like about you, you're a man of vision. Mm. I'm, a, I'm a man of vision. I like mm. people that says we can do something. That's right. And so give me a little bit about your background, what God is doing, and where you come from, and where you're going. All right. Well, graduated from West Point in 99, and uh, that kind of set the stage for my Army career, so to speak. Sure. But I didn't know the Lord then. Uh -huh. It wasn't until after I graduated, I found myself in Fort Knox, Kentucky, and I started going to church in Louisville, Kentucky. That's, that's where all the gold is. That's right. Did you see, did you see any of it? Uh, I didn't get a chance to, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, just they, they, the thing guarded pretty well. <laughs> I understand. And, but, you know, I did find gold right. when I found the Lord. You better know it. And uh, so it was at Southeast Christian Church, Louisville, Kentucky. Bam! Christ came pouring in my life, and I accepted him December 5th, 99. Amen. And from that day forward, I'm telling you, black and white, the vivid colors, the way life turned out, and I couldn't stop talking about Jesus. So Jesus is more to you than a religion. No. Yeah, it's yeah, a he, lot more. He it's was a, a person, wasn't it? It's a person. It's a, that whole connection with the Heavenly Father. That's what I try to tell people all the time, mm. ladies and gentlemen. You're seeing this in Christopher. You know, a lot of people, when they watch us on television, they, say, they go, oh, those people are religious. No, we're not religious. We have Christ in us, yeah. the hope of glory. You know, Tell me a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you know, and what I learned about it is that, you know, the gospel is not about making bad people good. It's about right. making dead people alive. There you go. And there's I like a point that. which you're dead and in your sins and just right. you're an enemy of God. You become a friend of God and that yeah. connection with him when you accept Christ. So as I was just going through my time in the Army, went to a whole bunch of different Army schools, found myself at Fort Bragg jumping out of airplanes as an airborne ranger. Jumping out of airplanes. Crazy stuff. Why would anybody want to <laughs> jump out of a perfectly good airplane? It, you know, it's I just painful. Have no idea. It, it, it's painful. <laughs> there's nothing good about it except for that there's five seconds when you're in the air and you're coming down, ah, and then it hurts. <laughs> yeah, I can't understand. <laughs> Uh, but then found myself in Korea, and then about after spending a year in Korea, my colonel says, Chris, I want you to take command of a tank company. I'm like, all right, I'll do that. And then 12 days later, he, and I get another phone call from him, and he's like, Chris, I need you to make an assessment of your men. I can't tell you why, but you can probably figure it out. And I'm thinking, what? You know? Yeah. Found out later that evening, we're going to war. Mm. So my tank company, which... Was I get augmented with a whole bunch of other soldiers and tanks. I ended up now, having 20. You, you wasn't saved then, were you, Chris? No, then I was saved. I was, I've, okay. been, I've been with the Lord for about six years at that okay. point, so okay. I, I had a, a deep faith. And so here I am going to Iraq. And I'll, but I'll tell you what, there's times when fear can kind oh, of yes. tremble and you're like, you know, have I been too sinful? I haven't been praying right. a lot lately. And there's just that sense that I need you, Father, now. And it, you know it's so cool. He is. There's never a point where he's like, you know, I can't talk to you right now. It's been too long. Yeah. There's always that. He's a, a perfect heavenly dad who wants to connect with you Amen. at that exact moment when you need. I, I like what you called him dad. See, a lot of people think that's disrespectful. That's not disrespectful. That's family. That's right. He's a son of God. That's I like right. that. See, he said, "Abba, Father," or "Daddy, Daddy." You know, a lot of religious people think that's you know so disrespectful. No, that's family. He's father. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. I love so it. when he called you and you knew mm. you were going to Iraq, mm. you're going to war. Mm. You know, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. That's right. How did you get the fear out? You know, through prayer and just through understanding the word. You know, Amen. I, I love the, you know, uh, Philippians 1.27 says, whatever happens, right. live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. Whatever happens. Amen. And so there's a point at which you got to go, okay, whatever happens, whatever happens what's going to happen, I'm going to follow Christ in the midst of whatever circumstances I face. Amen. So a couple months later, I find myself in Iraq. And I'm telling you what, it's 125 degrees outside. And I'll never forget the first day of combat, just watching heat waves bouncing off the minarets of the mosques. And, you know, watching the Iraqi people exchanging right. groceries, doing their thing. There are my tanks rolling out the sector. And the time that we were supposed to take over was 1400, 2 p.m. I glanced down at my watch, and as I looked down, I said, boom, a massive explosion erupts about a quarter mile out. And smoke and fire bill into mm. a mushroom cloud about 250 feet high. Immediately, I run back in, into the command post. I'm trying to figure out through the situation reports what exactly is going on. And you know what? Brother Jesse, there's oh, man. three letters that you never want to hear creep across the radio in combat. Mm. And that's KIA. Right. Killed in action. Right. First four minutes, I've lost my first soldier. My Lord. And so immediately I go grab my M4 carbine rifle, my right. flak vest, I sprint down to my tank, and you know, the emotions are swimming right. around. I jump in the tank, I charge my 50 caliber machine gun, my gunner gets the whole tank ready, we push out in the sector. And as we're leaving uh, the, the west gate, another tank's coming in. The entire right side of that tank is just decimated oh, my lord and sergeant Fallant is no longer in the hatch i understand he now lies dead in the turret 
Right. But I can't think about that right now because as soon as right. we're outside the west gate, we're taking small arms fire, machine gun fire, and mortars from the north side of the Euphrates River. I line three tanks up line. We start to pound the north shore with machine gun fire, main gun fire, and just we're going back and forth for about 15 minutes. You know, Chris, I believe that's why that, that colonel made you the head of that because right. you see, when you're in a fight, when mm. you're in a battle, and you still got the lead. That's right. See, a lot of people want to stop. A lot of Christian people, they get in a battle with the dead. They go, oh, God, what am I going to do? That's right. Here you got your buddy who is dead and bleeding, but you still got people, men behind you that yeah. you got to get from point A to point B. That's it. You know, the emotion of the moment was, was this. It's like, I just lost my first soldier, and I'm about to get my first firefight. You know, right. those, 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 you know that connection. This is like, God, I need you to be with me through this. And, but the funny thing is, he already was. Yeah. You know, and that, yes. it's just like, I'm yeah. going to rest in that as we go out to fight the battle. And so as we're, you know, the insurgents, they uh, withdraw after about 15 minutes. Right. I send two tanks across the river. I follow my tank. 100 infantrymen. We start searching house to house to house to house. Looking for any clue as to who or what may have killed my man. Right. And, you know, after seven hours of searching, we find nothing. And so at the end of day one, I'm physically exhausted because I just mm -hmm. ran around 125 degree heat, 50 pounds of gear. I'm emotionally drained. Right. Because I just lost my first soldier. Well, you know, yeah, the thing, Christopher, I don't think people understand the concept mm. of the Iraq war, mm. what you gentlemen have mm. went through. I mean, this is a hero here. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm. I'm not just saying that to make him well. feel good, but that's just the truth. You protected me. You protected everybody in this studio. This man protected you. Now, whether you agree or disagree how yeah. the Iraq war got started, sure. you had to go out there and face what I didn't have to face. Mm. And, you know, God gave you a book called Faith in the Fog of War. Now you see, so you, you, this is not, this is real to you. Yeah. You've been in the fog a while. How did this originate coming from that background yeah. into this? Well, you know, it's just like when you're the emotions of, even, there's a sense sometimes where you don't feel God. Right. You know, and there's right. that sense, God, you're on vacation, you're, you're taking a day right. off. And I learned this lesson from that first day, which this kind of continued throughout the book. It was this, this premise. I can never let my current circumstances determine the presence of God. Praise the he Lord. He is Say always, that again. Say that I again. I can never let my current circumstances yeah. determine the presence of God. Oh, I love that. He is always with me. And so, you know, the, the book was written as I happened. When other people were writing emails home, I was like, well, let me see if I can encourage some people. <laughs> yeah. And so I, uh, I wrote that, and I, just the, the presence of my heavenly Father, my, my dad and up in heaven who knows me better than anybody. Amen. And him watching me through the daily struggle of heartache, because you know what? As much as, much as you want to say there's no tears, there are tears. Sure but you are. know what? I love what we said earlier, the joy comes in the morning because Amen. His grace is always more yeah. than enough. I, I tell people all the time, it, people say, Jesse, you ever have any problems? Yeah, I got a lot of problems. Yeah. But what I, I don't focus on my problem, mm. I focus on my answer. Mm. I don't deny the problem, mm. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I go to that answer. Now, in this faith in the yeah. fog of war, you did a volume one and a volume mm. two. So in other words, this man, they shooting at him, they're doing all this kind of stuff, and he's got a book in his mind. Now, God's got a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, if you really think about that, you know, instead of going, oh, God, what I'm going to do, yeah. the Lord is writing something so someone can read your book, right. and then all of a sudden, they come out of the fog of life. That's right. And because, they can think. And that's what I was thinking, you know, because I knew people would want to know about the war, so I used that as a, right. a platform for the gospel. Right. And every chapter, I'm going to say, you know what, here's what's going on. Someone may have died, or we, we captured some terrorists, yeah. but you know what, here's how the gospel's playing in my Ooh, life glory. right now. And I'd ask questions that would penetrate the heart. Just see, make oh, Lord, isn't that amazing? I want to tell you something. You need to get this man. This man did a memorial service for the first man he lost in combat. So if he can do that, don't you think he could preach in your church? Or preach in your meeting somewhere? Think about that. God sent this man to us. And, you know, you've been there. You know, I came out of the Vietnam era. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm a lot older than you are. And, uh, but you know what? And people didn't understand that war. And I think of Iraq today, they don't understand that neither. That's right. But you know, Chris, I want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart for protecting the United States, mm -hmm. for protecting us, but also for keeping your witness, for preaching the gospel, yeah. for ministering. The, and, and you know what? This man is not just saying something. He's doing something. How can people contact you so that yeah. you can get the minister for them? Yeah, you know, at my website, faithinthefog.com, you I can find that. out a way <laughs> to, uh, to get con hold of me. And I love to come speak. I speak it, uh, you know, to youth, to radio churches, to right. adults, you name it. I'm, I'm out there preaching to them. I preach in prisons. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Someone wants me to share the gospel with them. I'm going to go out and share it because that's my heart to let everybody know that there's a heavenly Father Hallelujah. who desperately loves them and wants our relationship with them. Well, you know, I say this all the time. The only Jesus that people may ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me or the Jesus in Brother Chris here. Yeah. I, you know, I've just met this man, but I, he, he's got a good spirit. I think he'd be a blessing to your church or to your youth or whatever. Let him preach to that whole church. 
because you got to understand something about this man. Mm -hmm. This man's been in battle physically. Yes, it's right. been shot at. People say, oh, yeah, but I live in East L.A. That happens every day. Yeah, but the difference is, is that, uh, you know, it's not like Iraq. You know, you don't have all that gear on you and That's things right. of that nature. You know, I really believe you're a soldier of the Lord Jesus That's Christ. Right. I'm excited about your book, and you need to get his book. You need to go to his website. You'll be blessed by it. I mean, he's got some wonderful things, and he even has a brave heart moment. Think about that. Glory to God. And you'll be blessed. Christopher, thank you for coming today and allowing us uh, to be a part of your life. And I'll say this, and I don't say it very often, but I feel the anointing of the Spirit. You need to have this man. Mm -hmm. You're watching, you think, should I have him? Should. You're burning daylight. <laughs> My Lord, what you need to do is get that so someone can be ministered to. Yeah. And right now, with the way the world's going, mm. they need a man like you because you've been there and you've been back. And he's also single. We've got to help him out here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus. He told me, he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, I help him out. He's a good man. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Yes.